You're listening to Catholic Chicago. Ahead, the Archdiocese of Chicago brings you programs about the people, events, and issues that touch our lives. Thanks for letting us be part of your morning. Now again, Catholic Chicago. Welcome. This is Deacon Jim Norman, Vicar for Deacons of the Archdiocese of Chicago. Welcome to Diaconia, a call to service. Diaconia is the Greek word for service. This is a show by deacons, but for all the faithful of Chicago. With me is Deacon Dave Brinsick. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Jim. And someone we all know and love and respect. Deacon Richard Hudzik. Out with the new and in with the old. There we go. <laughs> Welcome home. Welcome back. It was about eight months ago. The chairs were reversed. I was a guest coming in as vicar, and uh, you as outgoing vicar had me on the show. We have you here, so we've known you as vicar of deacons. We know you currently as director of ongoing formation uh, for the permanent office of deacons. And today we get to know you as YouTuber. The, me the media mogul. The media mogul. Uh, indeed, and specifically to talk about your role, your um, life as a YouTuber, and specifically the series that you have now, uh, Believe, Belong, Belong, Believe, Behave. Or if I get that right. Or, yeah, or, yeah, or, or the opposite. Or the opposite. We can talk about that, yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll talk more about that. So first, we'd like to get to know you as the YouTuber, and I think Dave has some questions for you. Well, welcome back, Richard. Thank you, thank you. So how long have you had your YouTube uh, videos? Uh, about the summer of 2020 is when I posted the first one. I'd been playing around with it before uh, for the parish and just recording stuff for the, for the deacons, uh, uh, you know, practice homilies for the deacons, and then I just wanted to develop the, the skills further, and I figured, what the heck? Uh, Learn by doing it. So I actually uh, started. I think the first first video was up uh, uh, in the middle of June, uh, 2020. And how many videos have you done since? Uh, I think uh, something like 50, so, so, something that less than 50. I think the ambition um, never met. Uh, but you know, a goal is not a goal unless it's it's hard to achieve. But the the usual. Uh, ambition is to, is to is to shoot for one a week um, and that's that's very hard to do if you're working full-time and you know the deacon at the parish and all the other stuff so I've not come close to that but um, you do get more traction I do notice um, when I post more more frequently so it's you know it, it's always it's got to take second place to a lot of things um, but that's that's where I'm headed is to is to try to uh, try to get that that once a week. Um, well, I'm sure it takes you know time to put these together. It's, it know, it does, hours. and it's it, and it's 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 educative for me, and it'd be something that I'd want to pass on to to deacons or to anybody who's engaged in any kind of public presentations. Because one of the things with the with the YouTube is to is to walk the line between superficiality, uh, buzz seeking, attention getting, and actually, uh, but also engaging people with your, with your message as a, for instance, um, and this has been valuable for me as a, as a homilist. One of the tactics of getting people to click on your thumbnail, and that's the little picture that you see when you're on the YouTube, on the YouTube page. And there are literally hundreds of millions, a billion, I don't know, of different different videos. I mean, there's there's hours and hours of video up, uploaded to YouTube every minute uh, of every day. Uh, so there's, there's lots to choose. So the question is, how do you get people to um, engage with what you want to say? One of the strategies to do that, and this is to 
you know, tune in if you're uh, any kind of public presenter, homilist, what have you, is that the, the, the advice is choose the title of your presentation first and then choose the thumbnail, the picture that's somehow illustrative of, of your idea or some kind of attention getting. And the idea of that is you then, you've got a limited attention spans, you've got limited permission with, the, with your audience, with your congregation, to engage them before they tune out. Uh, in, a, in a mass, you know, that most of the time they don't walk, get up and walk out, but uh, on the YouTube, you know, just click to another, another presentation. So there's different ways of, of tuning in and, and tuning out. So if you focus on your title, and as a homilist, as a presenter, you've got to ask yourself, what is, what am I talking about? What is that one thing I'm talking about? Because I can, you know, as I'm doing right now, I can talk for, you know, for minutes upon minute in a disjointed fashion, but you got to drill down. We, in formation, we talk about the golden thread back in the, the day. What's the one thing you want to say? Tell it with stories. Tell it in a way that attracts people's interest. And as I say, we're kind of walking the line between, oh, you know, am I being flashy or, you know, is this, a, it's not a TikTok video, but because I've got something I think important to, to convey. The channel is called Deacon Richard Handing on the Faith, and I, I'm sin sincere about that. So it's, it's taught me that, that notion of what's your message, refine it, focus on it, and then shut up and, and let people go about, about their business. Um, so it's it's good for us to to do that, um, and maybe there's a workshop somewhere here for for the deacons or other homilists or presenters. But I, I think it's it's taught me that, and it's a very difficult thing to to accomplish. And I can I can describe it, but actually do it. You know, you guys have given homilies yourselves. You know, say one thing. Um, mm -hmm. It's not easy. And how did you come up with the title "Handing on the Faith"? Uh, it's I, it, it's a second name. The the first name was a a Catholic deacon's joy. Um, and that was just kind of too, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I didn't like it. It, it. I didn't stick with it. But the, the joy part was that the message of the gospel that we have is, you know, it's, I hear that's called good news. Um, and good news means that we should be joy filled. So I, I wanted to kind of communicate that uh, in some fashion. This is not dour. This is about this is about life. This is about life in the spirit and, and having it in abundance. So, um, so the handing on the faith is to uh, is to do it joyfully. I have a, when you land, I, I can see it on the on the screen right now. That the channel the channel trailer. Um, my promise to when you land on the page that will play automatically it's, it's, it could be annoying if every time I land on the page I got to listen to myself say the same thing but the promise there is is to never take myself serious too seriously uh, I don't want to be oh, this is such a heavy burden this this life of faith so handing on the faith was um, to communicate what I think is the best of, of what we have in our faith sometimes I think of it is I read the book, let me tell you about it, so you don't have to. Um, I remember doing, uh, there's a video or two on Laudato Si, and that's, that's, a, that's an appreciably lengthy uh, encyclical from Pope Francis, so I sort of made the, the, the jest in it, is that, all right, I read it, here's what it's about, go back and read it if you want to, but I, I wanted to communicate the, the joy of that um, of that encyclical. Um, so I, I pass on stuff that I love. Um, Father Donald Haggerty is a priest of the Archdiocese of New York. Um, he's written a, a, a series of books. I've done some, uh, some presentations on that. When I talk about Father Haggerty, he strikes me as the prayer's prayer. Hmm. And he's, he addresses topics that, that come to me in my little broken prayer life, but he's He's dealt with things. Uh, he's a spiritual director. He teaches uh, spirituality at the seminary in, in the Archdiocese of New York. But just marvelous insights. And that handing on the faith, that's something that, that people ought to tune into uh, to get his books. Uh, so it's that notion of being joy-filled, uh, which, is, which is a stretch for me, um, you know, um, 
just an anecdote. I remember in, in formation, one of our first classes was, was proclaiming the scriptures. And um, I thought I was just being Mr. Charm and oozing with compassion and you know, Mr. Simpatico. And I was just reading this thing when my, my, my emotions were on my sleeve. And I remember the, the instructor saying, you know, you need to loosen up a little bit because you are so uptight that, <laughs> lady, this was the best I could do. So anyway, um, so there, you know, laugh at myself, um, but also pass on some of the treasures uh, that we have in our church. Our, our tradition is, is so rich and abundant. And it, it's, you know, as, as Bishop Barron would say, it's a, it's a smart religion. Um, and there's stuff there that uh, that would do us all well to to, to try to grapple with. So, well, I was going to ask also how how do you come up with a particular topic? I mean, like, it's such a rich faith. Yeah. How yeah. do you narrow it down? Like, I want to talk about this. Well, let me, let me be self-effacing again because the 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 the, the experts uh, on YouTube is that ask uh, answer people's questions, mm. which is you know if you want to communicate, yeah, well, ask what's on people's minds. But I I sometimes think I come along and. I have the answers to questions nobody's asking, uh, which is, which is, which is a non-starter. But I come up with it um, with stuff that I've read, um, things that are that are happening, not so much current events in the in the church. I, I kind of stay away from that just to have some. There's other people commenting on that, and there's enough gas uh, spilled on, on that. So it's it's more um, things that. You know that I've seen, that I'm reading about, um, uh, and, you know, and we can you know, talk about the the videos we're talking about uh, today. This uh, uh, belong, believe, behave springs out of uh, a renew my church meeting that the the deacons that uh, well I know you guys went to like six of them uh, yes. actually. You went to f five of I went to, I went to the one for my vicariate vicariate four, um, but just. Uh, listening to Father Jason Malave uh, encourage the deacons and the deacons wives who were there about uh, this next phase of Renew My Church, building the new reality and, and how we how we welcome people. Um, and it just, it, it really struck me. Um, and I, then I got to, to thinking about that. And one of the ways I, I discover things or learn about things is um, I will write about them because uh, sadly, uh, I mean, at the beginning of the paper, I don't know where I'm going to end up, which is which is no way to write, um, but I do it time and again. Uh, so it, it just means you have to go back and, and reshape it. So um, I was intrigued by uh, so much of what Father Jason had to say, and that's uh, that's where I took this this paradigm or, or from Father Jason and, and other other places as well. But do people belong first to a parish, and then they believe, and then they behave, um, or do you need to get your, your life together before you can be part of us? And do you believe what we do believe? And, and then if you have that, um, then you can be part of the family. Is, is that the model or is it the, the reverse? And that's, that's what the video is. Uh, that's what that's about. So uh, we're, we're going to take a quick okay. break. But before we do that, if I grab my phone, where can I find you on YouTube? If you go to the YouTube search engine, you go to at Deacon Richard. Uh, that's at the uh, at the YouTube search, or if you're on if you're on the Google search, uh, Deacon Richard Hudzik, you should be able to find it. But uh, there's lots of competition out there, so but that'll, that'll get you there. All right, we'll be right back. Caring adults make all the difference in the lives of adolescents. Catholic Charities understands this, and our mentorship programs provide a free opportunity for young adults to spend time with volunteers who genuinely care about them. This program is ideal for youth aged 9 through 12 who may need support navigating the challenges of childhood and early adolescence. Our amazing volunteers service friends who help youth recognize their strengths and empower them to reach their full potential. 
Catholic Charities conducts a thorough background check on every volunteer, and our program coordinator closely monitors and supports every relationship. Mentoring is a fun after-school program that can help young adults build confidence and enjoy fun activities with their peers, too. To learn more, visit catholiccharities.net or call 312-655-7970 in Cook County and 847-782-4224 in Lake County. We're connecting youth with great role models. Join us today. I can't imagine myself going into any other school. Our school fosters growth by being a backbone to our family. My kids are incredibly well-rounded. I see a lot of kindness in them on a daily basis. One of the things I think Catholic schools do well is personalize the learning experience. You can hear joy in the classrooms. I feel that like I'm happy that I am in this kind of school. Our school communities provide students with academic excellence and character education in a supportive and stable learning environment. Come see for yourself. Visit artschicago.org slash find a school. Community is core to Catholic Charities founding mission. For more than 100 years, we have met people and families where they are, serving anyone in need, regardless of their faith, gender, race, or ethnicity. As our world absorbs the economic, political, and social aftershocks of the pandemic, 50% or more of the 6 million people living in Cook and Lake counties have little or no savings. They are a paycheck away from zero. We are deeply grateful to everyone in the Catholic Charities community who partners with us to alleviate the suffering of the people we serve and offer them a better path forward. We are witnessing a message of mercy and hope to a world very much in need. Learn more at catholiccharities.net. Imagine your own Catholic parish. What happens when someone new comes along who wants to be a part of the community and not just to sit silently at Mass, but to get involved in all the activities of the parish? Well, ordinarily that would be more than terrific, but suppose this newcomer is in some public or obvious way not living a life that is consistent with the moral teachings of the church. Imagine this publicly seen moral failure however you want to. Maybe it's a question of divorce and remarriage and no annulment, or it's a question of lifestyle, or maybe they're earning a living in a way that is incompatible with the life of a Christian. Say, you know, I don't know, they're a drug dealer. Are they welcome? Doesn't someone have to behave correctly first in order to belong and be fully welcome at the parish? And what are the reactions of the regulars of the parish? If Welcome back to Diaconia. We're here with Deacon Richard Hudzik, um, Director of Ongoing Formation for the Permanent Office of Deacons and YouTuber. And YouTuber. We just saw a clip of uh, your most recent YouTube video, um, Belong, Believe, Behave. What was your hope in getting across to the audience in this video? Is to... I'm just sharing, uh, you know, I guess, naively my own uh, journey on this to uh, to think about that and have people think about it with me. That um, you know, I'm on the cusp of being 71 years of age. Who would have ever thought I would get that far? That's, but 71 is the new 51, so I'm I'm feeling pretty good. But I think back to uh, from whence I've come and uh, just conversations with, you know, overhearing parents and grandparents that you've got, you know, you, you, if you want to belong here, you need to have, you know, the good life. And in a world that's increasingly uh, ignorant, uh, unacquainted with, with, with the gospel, is that still a viable strategy? Is that, does that make any sense? Did it ever make any sense? So the thought was to share what I've been discovering um, and have people uh, think along with me. Um, and as I say, I, I oftentimes begin a uh, an intellectual journey not knowing where I'm going to end up. And this is another one because um, as, as I was driving in this morning to uh, for recording this, um, I was working on the title for part two. There's a, there's a second part to this. It's all... Um, edited, ready, ready to be uploaded, but you need a title. 
And, I'm, and again, the title has got to be something that invites people in. And I, I think I finally discovered why I did this. And the, the title is going to be something like welcoming the, quote, sinner, uh, air quotes around uh, sinner, is your path to grace. It's your path to growth, some, something like that. And so what I'm thinking and what I've, I've find, I, I wish I were this smart before I recorded it, but, um, but that's where I've ended up. And I, I think that the theme is consistent. So that my hope is that if we were to try this, um, if we were to engage those who are somehow on the margin, they got you know their, they get their toe tip dipped into the water of the of the church, but you know they're not regular somehow, whatever that might mean. If I, as a parishioner, can envision myself as Jesus the welcomer, um, and we see that in the Gospels, He did it time and again. If I can, you know elevate my my game to to thinking somehow of, of what that's like to be that sort of minister um, and if I can overcome the notion that well if I welcome then I must be agreeing and we have to disconnect that just because you know I love my children and they are perfect uh, and I love my grandchildren they're perfect too I, I'm facetious um, but just because they I have this relationship doesn't mean that 101% of what they do think or, or feel is going to be my, my thinking, feeling, or uh, attitude. And so too with, with people who are on the margins, however described, um, you know, I love you, uh, person to person, Christian to Christian, um, but that doesn't mean that I endorse and that's it's sometimes a tough thing to navigate for, for us for us to navigate that we we think that welcoming also means um, agreement or that we're indifferent to uh, to the teachings of the faith and that's not that's not the resolution um, I think one of the ways that you tried to walk us through that in this first video was as you said bringing us back to scripture yeah taking a glimpse of what did Jesus do in this instance? And for our, our listeners and those who are watching, can you take us back to Scripture for a moment? One of your favorite gospel stories that brings across this belong, believe, behave. Yeah, and as there's, there's a number of instances. Um, uh, and I, I cite three in the, in, in the video, but one is, would be uh, Zacchaeus. Um, Zacchaeus, the tax collector, short in stature, knows there's the buzz that, Jesus, this healer, is coming to town, so he climbs a tree. So is that preliminarily some kind of yearning? And the answer is yes. Is that some yearning on Zacchaeus' part to belong somehow to this man Jesus and, and what he's about? I think it is. And so there's that, that first piece of belong in, in, in some inchoate form. But then you also encounter uh, Jesus engaging him, you know, Zacchaeus, come down to the tree, and tonight I'm going to be at your house, we're going to have dinner. And then you hear what we sometimes will hear, I'll, you know, I'll think it myself, well, now wait a second, what's this Jesus doing with this sinner? Doesn't he know who he is? That's not right. That Zacchaeus guy needs to get his, his act together first. Um, and so those, those people are... Um, the, the engineer is signaling to us, and, and my, my two colleagues are just spellbound. He wants to give us that we got five minutes. So, <laughs> as I say, don't take myself too seriously. Um, so, we'll encounter that in our parish. Um, I've seen it, I've, I've heard it. It's like, well, now wait a second. What's, what's this person doing here? That wasn't the difficulty for Jesus. He overcame that. So, um, we've got the, the belong move, we've got the, the suspicion amongst the, the, the regulars. Um, we've got the, the next move of Zacchaeus saying, Lord, and you can ask, well, is he calling him Lord? Is that a, a social sign? He's saying, sir, or is he somehow communicating Jesus' dominion over, over creation? Uh, you know, is that some elemental faith? Is that some elemental believe move? Um, perhaps it is. And then the, the, the behave, if, 
if our gospel is as transformative and life-giving and joy-filled as we, we know it to be when we're at our best, when we let the clouds of sin get away from us, dissipate from us, who we are will change. We will behave. That is, our life will be reborn into some new relationship with, with the Lord. So the Zacchaeus story is suggestive, at least, of the paradigm that we can talk about the belong, believe, and behave. So that's so that's that would be one. Uh, Zacchaeus is, is is one way. You you spoke about the, and, and this was the quote of the Pharisees. And I guess as I listened to, and watched the the YouTube video, I thought, oh, could I have been a Pharisee? Because what is he doing here? He's in my pew. He's in my space. Look at how he or she is dressed. They're a visitor. And I don't mean that in the welcoming sense. You know, have I been guilty of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's and that's the, the challenge. And I've, I'm by no means uh, holding myself above or apart from anybody. But yeah, me too. Um, you know, it's you're not you're not a regular. You're not uh, you're not the normal here. Um, and I examine my, my own consciences, uh, have, have I been less than abundantly, uh, receptive. Um, and that's why I say, you know, part of this journey is welcoming the sinner. And again, uh, I put sinner in the title or I will put it in the title as uh, a tad provocative because people, are, well, wait a second, what's a sinner? Who, who, who are you to call somebody a sinner? But welcoming the sinner legitimately is my path to discovery. It's my path to self-examination. It's my path to my own metanoia to, to cause me to examine where I've been less than, less than welcoming. It seems like belong, believe, behave also requires a bit of humility. So me, the center, welcoming another center. Yeah. Yeah. It, yes. Um, and that's, Again, that's part of that transformation that this this process this process calls for. Um, it leads us to an examination. That would be my hope. I mean, ideally, um, you know, I, I go into this so often blind, um, you know, not really knowing where I'm going to end up. But as I reflect on it, as I you know, produce the thing and get it out, um, and as I reflect upon it, that that, that would be cool if we could um, come away with that kind of. Uh, personal uh, appropriation of the message. So thank you for the YouTube video. It is belong, believe, behave. And there's a part two coming out. We're fortunate enough that we're going to have a part two with you to talk about that video and, and the hopes there and what we hope the viewers will get from it. But uh, thank you for taking the time to create these videos and share your insights with us and bring us along on the journey. Thank you for having me, and uh, thanks for listening. Thanks, Richard. Thank you. Join us every Monday through Friday at this time for Catholic Chicago. You can stream our programs live or listen to past programs by visiting our website, archchicago.org, and clicking on Radio TV. And please connect with Catholic Chicago on social media. It is not for me to give, but for those for whom it has been prepared. It will be given.